Hello world, I'm Hassan from the Fused VR team. I got to do an obligatory VR headset hair check. And today we're going to be showing you how you can build click to teleport curves, uh, specifically Bezier curves on Gear VR. We were inspired to make this by tons of VR titles that use this mechanic, one of our favorites of which is Robo Recall. Now behind me, you can see the other members of our team. We have Fuse Men and also Abdo. Uh, they won't be on this stream, but we're always working together to bring you guys some cool mechanics and projects that you can build. This tutorial is going to be a little bit different than some of our past ones. Instead of walking through everything line by line, we actually built this project and put it on our GitHub repo, like some of our other projects. So you can download that if you want to follow along and take this to the next level. You can find a link to this in the description. Another thing is we're going to assume that you're already set up, but if you end up having questions on setup for Gear VR and Unity or more questions on the code and want more of a walkthrough, just let us know in the comments and we can definitely do that. Before we dive right in, the last thing I want to say is that we have a little bit of a proposition to you. Like I said, this was inspired by Robo Recall, and we're excited about the concept of porting more Robo Recall mechanics onto mobile VR. So if you share out this video, if we get around, let's say 10K views within the next month, then we will keep making more tutorials that show you how you can port mechanics from Robo Recall onto something like a mobile VR headset, like the Gear, the Go, or Daydream. And we think that could be really cool and also really timely because standalone VR and mobile VR could be pretty huge in the coming year. We're gonna make tutorials anyway, but if you want to specifically see those ports from Robo Recall, then just share out this video. Without further ado, let's dive right in and let's get building. To start off, I want to talk about our setup, the touch mechanism that we are using, and also how you can test your Gear VR projects. That's really critical. So getting started with setup, here's my scene. You can see that we've imported some assets, and when you download our project, you'll get these too. We got these for free off of the asset store. We also downloaded the OVR utilities package. So you can see that in my uh, assets over here. And what we're using to drive a lot of the VR interaction is inside of prefabs, there's this OVR camera rig. And we have actually adjusted that into the teleport rig that you see in my hierarchy. You can find the prefab that we made inside of teleporter, then prefabs and teleport rig. Now the difference between the teleport rig that we made and the default OVR camera rig is that we added this teleport sprite that moves around to tell you where you're going to teleport. And then on side of the right hand anchor, um, we put a Bezier curve and this actually handles drawing the curve. But let's talk about the touch input mechanism. So in our project, if you double tap the trigger, you toggle teleport mode on and off. And then when teleport mode is on, if you tap the touchpad, you actually go to wherever you're pointing. We're driving that interaction at the top level of this teleport rig on the teleport script. So let's talk through this. There's a lot of different stuff in here, but we're going to focus on this update teleport enable uh, function because the rest of the stuff is mostly um, icing on the cake and sugar on top. So this is running every update, so every frame of the project, and what it's doing is it's checking for a double click. The way that we do this is through this first click boolean flag. So we're checking for a click down on the trigger with this line right here this get down on primary index trigger, that's this button. And if it's the first time that that is pressed down, then we set first click to true and we start a timer. This timer is what we're using to make sure that we get a double click instead of a click and then waiting for a really long time and a separate click that's not really a double click. The way we do that is that we check that the next time this runs, is it the first click? If it's not, then we go into um, the second part of the if statement. And here we set first click to false because we want to reset our double click mechanism. And we also toggle the teleport mode because this means that it's not the first click, but it's the second click. So now it's time to turn the teleport mode on or off. But the part that's not clear just from looking at this is what is actually making sure that we're tracking a double click as opposed to a click, a delay, and then another click. 
And for that, you have to look at the very end of this function. So you can see that every time this runs, we're also comparing the current time minus the first click time, so when we detected the first click. And if that difference is greater than some double click time limit that is set up here to half of a second, then we set first click to false. So basically, we're resetting our tracking of the clicks. So again, just to summarize, when we get a first click down, we set first click to true. And then if we get another click before this time limit gets too big, then we'll enter into this second click We'll set first click to false so that we can start over and we toggle teleport mode. Now you can check out the rest of this if you want to see how we are handling the touchdown, but it's pretty simple. The other thing that runs every frame is this handle teleport. And what that's doing is that if we're actually pointing in a valid direction, so if there's an endpoint detected, we'll get into that in a second. And also if somebody clicks down the button one, which is the touchpad button, then we actually teleport to the position. So that's the majority of what's handling the touch. One optional thing you could look at is this handle Bezier function. What this does is that if you have your finger towards the top of the touchpad, it will extend the Bezier. And if you have it towards the bottom, it will pull the Bezier back. That was a lot of stuff. So I want to make sure that you know ways that you can debug your code on Gear VR. And this is really important because on the Vive, on the Rift, on other headsets, there are a lot of built-in emulators for Unity, so it's easier to test out your code. One thing that you'll notice from looking at this code so far is that we actually haven't written anything that's Gear VR specific. A beauty of the OVR utilities is that they're agnostic to the type of controller that you're using in many different ways. So for example, this line of code that's checking for get down on the primary index trigger would also work on a touch controller. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that sometimes the button mappings are different or the things that a, a touch controller can track are different from what a gear controller can track. But the reason why I bring this up is that if you have a Rift, one way you can test out your code is actually to plug in your Oculus while you're using Unity and actually just to use your touch um, while you're seen as running in Unity because there is an emulator for touch controllers while Unity is running. Unfortunately, there's not an emulator for the Gear VR controller. So if you don't have a Rift, what you can do is put in these debug.log statements and then run your application while your phone is attached to your computer and look for these log statements in your console. So I'll show you how to do that. Now let me pull up my console over here. I'm going to kill this. We'll also clear. And on my phone, I have my um, app already installed. I, I built it to the phone. And I'll show you that it's running right now. Now what I need to do is I need to get the debug.log statements from this to show up in my terminal, and that's one great way to debug. And the way that you can do that is by running this command right here. So adb logcat dash s unity activity manager <laughs> package manager dalvik vm debug. What this is doing is it's taking all of the logs that are Unity specific from my Android phone and printing them out to my console. So you can see right here that it keeps printing out this resetting timer or make sure that your phone doesn't go to sleep. It keeps printing out this resetting timer debug log, but I can also use this to show you when I get a first click and when I get a double click. So I'm going to click down the trigger once and you saw that when I do that, at the very bottom of the console, it's starting to show first click detected, but then it resets the timer because I'm not doing a double click fast enough. Now, if I start doing double clicks, we'll see that log statement. So there's a few of those. And again, this is just a great way to test out your application uh, if you don't have a Rift and a touch controller. Move to the next location. Why? The last thing we need to talk about is how we're actually drawing the curve that is used for our teleport aesthetic. Specifically, we're using a Bezier curve, and you can see that it's controlled by this Bezier curve game object inside of the right hand anchor. This has a line renderer. So just to summarize, what's going on is we're using this mathematical function, specifically a Bezier curve function, 
to find the different points to draw on the line. And we're solving that function and finding those points inside of this Bezier script. So before I talk about how we're actually doing that, I want to take a brief diversion and talk about what a Bezier curve actually is, in case you've never heard of it before. So I think one of the best examples is um, from Jason Davies. Here we have a site that shows interactive examples of different Bezier curves. Bezier curves are just ways of specifying different control points that will in turn draw a certain curve based on where those control points are. So you can see as I move this point, all of the curves change. So we have a linear curve or essentially a line, a quadratic curve, a cubic curve, a quartic curve, and you could go on and on. And there are different functions for solving each of these. But at a high level, what's happening is we are tracing a point along each segment that connects these control points. And then in turn, we are tracing a point along a segment that connects all of those different points. So you can see it gets more intense as we go on. And the result of this is that we can get a smooth curve um, just by using a mathematical function rather than actually having to shoot out a projectile and follow the path of the projectile. Or in the case of um, the cubic and the quartic, I mean, you wouldn't really be able to easily model these by using a projectile. So that just goes to show you that Bezier curves, they're really solid even in the quadratic case because just solving a function is more optimal than shooting out a projectile in Unity and using that to create a curve. Um, but also in these higher order cases, you would be hard pressed to create anything like this just using a projectile. But a Bezier curve does the trick. Now the equation for this Bezier curve, you can find um, anywhere online, it's a quadratic Bezier curve. Um, here's a Wikipedia example, and it boils down to this equation right here. You can read more if you want more background. And also, if you want to prove it for yourself that this actually works, just try plugging in different values of t. You'll see that as t moves from 0 to 1, which is the bounds for t, then this red dot moves from p0 to p2. And in the case of this equation, when t is 0, you'll see that this is p0. When t is 1, you'll see that this is p2. So now let's go over to this Bezier CS script. And at the very bottom, we have this calculate Bezier curve um, point. Um, and what this is doing is it's taking that float t. It also has our control points. These are configured up here. So control point 0 is just wherever the controller is. That's the game object's position. Um, control point 1 is projected forward a bit, and control point 2 is projected a bit more forward and also down. The other major function in Bezier.cs is this draw curve. So just looking at this purely naively, what it's doing is it's finding each of those points to draw. But when we dive in, we'll see that it's actually doing a little bit more than that. So we have this for loop right here that is going from i equals 1 to segment count. So we have that set to 50, and you can set it to whatever you want. But essentially, that's determining how many steps t is taking. Because right here, you can see that t is just being updated to show our progress from i to segment count. And then what we're doing right here is we're finding the next point on the Bezier curve. You'll see that we do something a little bit different for the end direction. But the most uh, important piece is that when we're not on that end segment, we're just getting the next position on a Bezier curve. Now next what we do is we plot that point. But this is where it gets a little bit more complicated than just drawing a Bezier curve. In the case that we're not actually hitting anything with the Bezier curve, it's simple. We just update the line renderer to have a new position. And what we do is at that new position, we put the, the position of the, the Bezier curve so that we're extending um, based on wherever t is as we update t. But if we are hitting something with the Bezier curve, we don't want to keep drawing it. And that's what's going on right here. As we do this for loop, we're constantly keeping track of the point that we just drew and the point that we're about to draw. And right here, we're checking if those two points um, are going to uh, collide with a collider in our scene. So is there a line between previous position and next position that hits a collider? That's what we're checking right here. 
if there is a collision between these two points, so if, if between them we can draw a line that intersects a collider, then that's our end point, which is getting set right here. And then we draw that end point. We, set, we say that an end point is detected and teleport uses that to draw the teleport position. And then we return. So we stop drawing this Bezier curve. That's a lot of stuff I'm <laughs> just explaining right now. And it could be pretty tricky. I mean, if you've never heard of a Bezier curve before, um, definitely don't expect to understand this the first time that you're seeing it. But instead, play around with this interactive example. Um, get a sense of how this red dot changes as you move around these points. And even better, start plugging in some values for t here. And you will see that a Bezier curve is simply a way of drawing a curve based on some points that we specify. And that's what we're doing right here. The only thing that changes is that we don't want to always keep drawing the curve. When we have two points, or when the, when the curve is going to intersect with a collider, we can end our Bezier curve early, and we can set our teleport point that the user can actually move to. So we just talked through a lot. In the very beginning, we talked about touch input on the Gear VR controller and how you can debug for Gear VR. And then we got into more math than you were probably expecting so that we could draw a Bezier curve. But this is important stuff. Uh, in the coming year, we do expect that mobile VR is gonna be really exciting. So it's cool to be thinking about how we can handle touch inputs and also how can we debug for these platforms. Uh, we're especially excited about Gear VR and I'm excited a lot about the Go coming out. And then on the point of the Bezier curve, you know, you might look at it and you might think this is uh, just overkill. I want to instead draw a projectile in my scene. But the thing is, is that this is a lot more optimal of an approach than drawing a projectile. So it's really useful to know about Bezier curves as ways that you can get natural and fluid motion in Unity rather than just drawing straight lines or using something like projectiles and getting an approach that works but not necessarily the most optimal one. Hopefully you enjoyed that deep dive and as always if you have any questions just leave some comments and we'll be sure to answer them. We hope that you enjoyed the video and also the tutorial. Also leave a like, definitely subscribe for more content on mobile VR and AR. AR and VR in general, and then also just future tech. We're stoked about building, and we're also stoked about showing you guys how to build different things. So let us know what you want to see next. Until then, happy building. I quit it with the